So what I've done is to, is to um, you know, this is a famous porcelain. This is his, where he used to sit and eat by, and where he used to come on the, used to sit with this incredible Sèvres collection. And so I, I've made, I've made porcelain bowls and written letters and, and, and fractured them, broken them and brought them in. You know, and so with all throughout the house, there are these moments that are almost imperceptible. Um, they're almost invisible. But um, it's, it's, a, it's a taboo to break porcelain. The world is full of broken pots. The world is full of... of um, but, yeah, but not done on purpose. You did it on purpose. Well, I did on purpose because if you, if you make porcelain like I've done for 45 years of my life, everything breaks. You know, you're, you live with breakage, you live with things going wrong. But it's always a big shock, no? No. It's, no? It's part of, it's a, what, the reality of, the reality of the world is that things break, you know. Even so, human. Yeah, it's exactly, especially human. So, so, you know, that's what my, that's why my books work, is that they talk about, they talk honestly about breakage, you know, and survival. That's what they are about, about what survives. You know, so you know, here we are, for God's sake, in the, in the most incredible Sèvres collection belonging to a family that dies in Auschwitz. So what, what, when you're talking about survival, what are you talking about? You're yeah. talking about the survival of an idea, you know. Um, and about making something with broken pieces, yes, right? Yes, yeah. And you're, but you're also talking about, you know, um, we're also talking about beauty. We're trying to talk about what what they were trying to do here in this house. And so you didn't you didn't do anything in this grand salon. Not here, but all throughout the house there are different moments where you. Why, why, why don't we go up and I'll show you some other places where where, where things are, I think I've done things. So you work like with whispers. Yeah, that's a, that's a really nice way of putting it. I mean, it's a it's a it's a it's a way of. I, I'm, I'm not a shouty man. You, know, I, you, know, I, I really you don't sing loud. Um, but I think that. For you know, um, here, here on this desk, there's a garniture of, of just there of of of, um, mm. of what? Porcelain and gold and lead. It's just I, all the different places that he wrote things. I've written letters to him. He didn't reply. Or well, he replied, but you didn't hear them. Oh, I did, exactly. So what I've done is to sort of is to, is to go to the places where he wrote all these extraordinary correspondence. But what, what's the symbol of these objects? So what it is is it, what it is. It's a, it's taking the the idea of an 18th century garniture, which is a formal arrangement of things. And then uh, abstracting it completely into uh. into into things of unbelievable fragility, unbelievable fragility. These are things which would almost sort of crumble in your hands. Um, and so you know, it's it's, it's part of the memorial. It, absolutely. And actually, if you talk about memorial. Let me show you upstairs um, a, 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 another example of that. I mean, this house is full of... This is one of the most beautiful small museums in the world, I it think. It really is. It's, it's, isn't it absolutely extraordinary? It's, um, um, but in a way, do you live in the past? Me? Yes. No, I work with... I, I, all my projects have something to do with the future. That's why I'm so passionate about it. I've, you know, but so history is uh, your passion still, right? But, but this is this is the reason I, I, I care about this is that this is unfinished history. Yeah, but history is ever unfinished. It, completely. So you know, if I'm dealing with this, I'm dealing with with not only with the Holocaust. Of course, I'm dealing with the Holocaust, but I'm dealing with the fact of of why that happened. You know, of you know the 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 the, the reality of you know I've, I've, I'm dealing with projects to do with refugees and exiles the whole time. So it's, you know, it's, it's, it's completely part of the same. I end my book talking about where you belong. And this is a house about belonging. I mean, this is a house entirely about belonging.
So for instance, if you come into this beautiful room here. Bonjour. Not only is there a very modest thing on the desk there made by, which I made, this is um, porcelain tiles stacked up ready for his correspondence. But then at the very back, you'll see four vitrines. You can hardly see them, they're disappearing. Yes. Each of which has broken pieces of lead and porcelain. Um, and they're just completely fractured objects from the studio, which are just sort of lo locating beautifully and carefully um, the places of, of, of loss. It's about ashes too, no? It's very much about ashes. Um, I, 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 the idea of ashes. Completely, and I, I you know, I, um, I, quote, I quote in my book um, Walter Benjamin, who was very powerful on this beautiful library. Um, and um, so, all the Gazette de Beaux Arts. That was the Gazette de Beaux Arts was. Oh, was the editor and the owner was Charles Frissy, who, who, ah. who, who lived up the road, who's my great great uncle. So, you know. Um, so, in your family, you kept all the memories well, from this period? Well, we don't have the, uh, the, the Degas and the Manet and the Pissarro and the Monet and the Sisley, we don't have, or the Bert Moret, so we don't have any of that. You know, we don't have any of the incredible. You know, we have a collection of nets, okay, these little Japanese things. Uh, I have some books. Which was the, big, the start of something important for you. Exactly. And then I've got the memories of my grandmother and my great uncle. I've got these and my memories of my father. You know, as I've, there are all these stories that come down. And then what do you do? You can either just be, you know, bourgeois, an anec you know, an anec a few anecdotes, or you can, or you can get to work. If you get to work, you're in archives, you're on a journey, you have to go to places, you have to search things out. And, and, you then, you spend... to, and then you have to work. You have to work and write the damn thing. And you spend a lot of time in the archive in this building, precisely. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, yes. You know, and in... To write your book. Well, I wrote my book in lockdown in London, in my studio. But... Which was perfect time for writing this kind of uh, um, well, theme. Yes, I mean, for writers, it was quite good. <laughs> rest of the world, no, but... For writers, it was a kind of solitude that was helpful. But also, it was a time of mourning. It was a time when you could really hear and tune into mourning. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Bon, merci, monsieur.